You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Welcome back to the Rachel LaForce show. This is me, Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. For a show of any other name would just be harder to Google. I This is a spiritual podcast where I and you, we are invested in your soul's growth and your growth as a human here on earth. Let's like make some cool shit happen. You know what I mean? This is a spiritual podcast from me, longtime comedian, uh, because healing is, well, hilarious. Um, I think it is so funny. It's so funny right now that I'm just in my room alone, just talking to nobody. This is great. This is hilarious. Um, I'm so excited for today, y'all. This is the third uh, episode of our three-part series. Um, It's yours, the business of leveling up and overcoming self-sabotage. We're talking all about our response and taking action. This is so exciting. I think that's a little bit more like, yay, like we can make new choices. Um, and you know, and also like, but it's a journey. So it's going to like take some trial and error. Um, but this is where the true embodiment comes from. Uh, the first week we talked all about acceptance that like, you're not going to get anywhere until we begin to accept that, our dreams, our visions, what we want for ourselves makes sense because that's what we said we wanted before we got here. These are our gifts innately. That's what we're here to share with the world. So no more hiding from it, playing small, any of that, right? It's the first step is accepting that this is exactly what we're here to do. The second part is our nervous system and that sense of embodiment and locking into our skis and really getting into that place where it's like, boom, I'm ready to fly. And episode three is really where when one meets two, then you get three, right? You know, a series. Um, and this is all about retraining our responses, which is in turn, we're able to do that because we paid attention to our typical nervous system reactions to things. So it's retraining our nervous system and, uh, creating new responses and thus we're taking new action, right? Um, And the response is the aspect of this that's related back to our nervous system. And the action is, what is the new action that you take now? We operate differently now. So the action that you take is going to be different. Here is where, again, that overcoming that self-sabotage, because you're going to get excited. Oh yeah, I'm going to email this person and ask for the job. I'm going to email this person, going to ask for the job. You're going to sit down to write that email and you're going to go, what the fuck am I thinking? I can't ask that person for a job, right? Like your self-sabotage is so real that it's going to be like, you know, uh, Hey, big dumb idiot. Like you're, what do you think? Oh, you think you're just going to like your big business now? Um, And so our nervous system plays such a major, major part in that of we're not going to be to a place where we feel safe enough to take new action until we have overcome that terror barrier, right? Google the terror barrier. Shout out to my friend Gabrielle uh, for introducing me to that concept. So that's all about our nervous system and that, you know, as we begin to take that new action and step out and step up, our nervous system is reacting because it's it has become accustomed to a level of suffering, self-acceptance, and routine. When you begin to do something different and you have not brought your nervous system along with you, you're always going to be working against yourself because your body is going to be signaling and acting and adapting in a way where it doesn't, it, it can't catch up with you right? It's like, no, 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 no. Isn't this scary? And if your mind's like, no, this is fun. We do this now. We do big things now. And your body is not there and ready. You're only going to be so successful in that endeavor. So again, all three of these steps together are always, it's a rinse and repeat. It's always going, which is the beauty of it. Sometimes it feels monotonous where it's like, oh my God. Right. Cause like one, you know, level up is just like the, you know, the valley to the next mountain. So it always kind of feels like this, like, 
oh, I thought I was getting somewhere and boom, now I'm back to like these basics. But that's what's so beautiful about a rinse and repeat is like you already know what the fuck to do. So it's no more sitting around like, oh, this is hard. No, uh, yeah, of course, okay. But so is like being broken, not going after your dreams and telling yourself that, you know, the same old song and dance as to like why you're not going after it. So choose your heart, right? You choose, you decide. So when we get our nervous system to a place, as we're working with our nervous system, as we are feeling free to make mistakes and feel uncomfortable and really retrain those neuro pathways, really retrain that sympathetic nervous system, really getting in that place where we feel comfortable to put ourselves in positions to be seen and whatever that means for your you know, specific thing, you're going to be able to take new action because you're having a new bodily response. So whether that response is actually just lives within your body that you feel empowered to make this new action, or that response is a fear response, or the response is an actual verbal response that you might give someone, you're going to begin to respond differently. And then thus you're going to take new action. That's going to create new outcomes. I know you're like, Rachel, I need an example. Oh my God. I'm so glad you're here. So, uh, back in June, it was father's day. I woke up and my phone just stopped working. It just was like, no, we don't want to do that anymore. And not, and like it shut off, would not turn back on. I'm like, oh no. And then it would look like it would turn off. And then the apple that like white apple would come on again and then it would shut off and then it would come on again. Now, I don't know if you've recently had your phone just decide to not working and if you tell me it didn't trigger absolute terror in you, I have to feel like you're lying to some degree. I was shocked to realize how much I rely on my phone, how addicted I am to my phone, how safe I feel with my phone in the moment of realizing that I may not have it for a few days. Excuse me. And what that, I'm not bored. Um, I, I just yawned. If you're like, what? That seems random. I, um, <laughs> it just created all these responses in me that I was not conscious of that I held around my phone. And when minor just life inconveniences used to happen to me, say six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, I would allow that minor inconvenience to become a mountain. Oh, and then a story. And then a thing like you just hold on to it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger rather than just like, yeah, it's a minor inconvenience. This isn't someone you love being sick. This isn't losing your home. This isn't losing a job. It's a minor inconvenience. It sucks. It's annoying. And it may be a little money. You're going to be okay. And so my husband and I are trying to diagnose it. We're trying to figure it out. Ding dong. All the family's here for Father's Day. And I look at him and I go, we're just going to have to figure it out later. And he's like, I know, but I want you to have your phone because I was getting ready to go on a road trip with my son, just Jonah and I. So I had to have a phone, you know, for GPS and all the things. Because of course you have to have a phone. What, what are you just going to be a person who gets in your car with like printed directions and just get there? Right? There's a million ways I could have safely gotten to where I was going. All right. It'd be fine. And I'm just like, I'm not going to play into that panic that I'm not going to have a phone ready in two days. I'm just not, I'm just not going to go there. And I know that like my husband was responding to that. Sorry about that ding. I know my husband was responding to that because he wanted to protect me. He wanted me to know, you know, that I'm safe, whatever. And I just looked at him and I go, right now, our family's here to celebrate Father's Day. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to worry about the phone later. Y'all, I never would have made that response years ago. I would have been, oh, I'm never going to have a phone. Oh, how are we going to replace the phone? Oh, it's fine. Went downstairs, was present with my family. We had a great time. Three hours later, everybody says their goodbyes. Great. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Genius Bar and see if maybe just by chance they have an opening they can help me today. Get to the mall. Well, you got to wait two hours, but we can't get you in today. All right, great. No problem. Figured it out. It was fine. You know, and it was like, went in there and she's like, don't worry about it. Oh no. And then that's what happened. I waited two hours. I still never got a text that like my time was ready. The mall was getting ready to close. And I went in, I was like, Hey, you guys said two hours. I never got a text. I just want to make sure if y'all can't see me today that I can get in first thing tomorrow. Cause I'm going on a trip and I need to, you know, get a phone. She looks at me up. She goes, Oh, your order was canceled. And she could see the absolute, like, I'm like, Oh no. Cause I was so proud of myself for not making a mountain out of mall hill. And here I thought it was like the universe being like, how much do you want to have a new response? And I was like, not that much. Okay, cool it. 
And and she looks at me and she goes, no problem. Even if we're here till 730, we'll fix your phone. Don't worry about it. So kind, so wonderful. And immediately that response again was where I was like, I trust that this is going to work out. And if it doesn't, something else is going to work out. I'm not there. There's so much energy that needs to go towards things that are actually problems. I'm not going to have the response to minor inconveniences anymore. So it's like, all right, I didn't have my phone for a day. And then, oh, worst thing, I had to hang out at the mall for three hours unexpectedly on a Sunday. It was fine. It was fine. Got my phone fixed enough to pay anything. Thanks so much. Thanks for being here. Great. And away I went. It didn't need to be anything that spectacular. You know, it used to be like, I think I told the story recently and I, you know, would ignore something that needed to get done with my car and then my car would have an issue. And then I'm like, why does this always happen to me? It doesn't always happen to you. You knew that you needed to get an oil change months ago and you didn't do it whether it was money or you didn't slow down or you weren't paying attention or whatever. And it's not about blame, but it's like, stop saying that this is just how could this happen to me? Sometimes shit just happens. And you, you got to just pick the days of how you want to respond to something, you know? And it's like, if, you know, I know a lot of you have presence on uh, social media, you know, and it's like everybody, oh my God, everybody's going to have a fucking opinion. You know, you say, oh, isn't it beautiful that flowers that are purple? And they're like, oh, you like purple flowers? Oh, you just don't care about red flowers? Oh, I guess you just don't care about all flowers. Oh, what kind of healer are you? Right? Everybody's got a fucking bone to pick. And we know this. We know this. We know this as people from that look at life from a, from a higher place, not saying that we're better than other people, but meaning that we choose to do that, which is not always easy. But you know that that person, that's about them. And that's not about fucking red flowers. Okay? Let's get one thing straight right now. But, you know... It's easy sometimes when people say something mean or when they attempt to disempower us or that they saw one thing you made and they've decided that you don't know dog shit. All right, fucking let them. It's so hard. It's so hard. I know that's the Mel Robbins, right? Let them. I know it's so hard, but you know, I think that's so much about what is this response, where you were going now with this level up. You don't have time. It's that simple. If you are trying to work to make the shit happen that you want to make happen despite all of the obstacles, despite all of the odds, you don't have time to give a shit for chicken shit. You don't. You don't. Write it down, put it on some merch and wear it. You don't. You don't. You don't have time for shit that's chicken shit. We just don't. And, you know, learning that of like, does this need my energy? Does it? And it's hard. I mean, you can oscillate again, right? This is this place of embodiment. Some things are going to be easier than others to, to have a new response. And it's going to be over time. Again, I said six years ago, I had a completely different response. That took six years to get to a place where I was like, it's all going to be fine. And if it's not, I'll buy a burner phone and print, you know, Google map directions. I'll bring my computer halfway through, stop at an internet cafe, tell my dad I'm halfway there. That's where we're going to meet. And, you know, go, hey, meet me at this place at this time, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. But what if an emergency? It'll be fine. It'll all be fine. And, you know, I think that's, that is so much of, again, because our fear response is A, that's what we're being shown all the time in the world, all the time. That's all our government is now. It's fear porn. That's all it is. That's all it is. I don't care what size this isn't about a political thing, but it's just like everything that's out there is designed to be like, it's all scary. The world is ending. And here's why you, that you should be afraid. And I'm not saying that there's not fucked up shit happening all the time in our country, all around the world. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not spiritually bypassing that, so to speak. But I'm saying the fear element of like that you can't do anything about it or all of it. It's like when we're inundated with that all day long, all we feel, it's like, well, yeah, of course we feel helpless. And that's easier to feel in our own lives. And then it becomes disempowering in our own lives. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's stop the ship just for a minute. And it's like, okay, I'm going to choose that things work out for me. That doesn't always mean that I'm fucking happy about the way it worked out. Okay. Let me tell you that. But that things are always working out for me and I can handle inconvenience because this episode, this, this idea of like changing your response, this is not about life changing things. Having a parent who has a terminal illness or, you know, the loss of someone you love or, you know, like. Uh, losing your home. Like th those are, those as a conversation for a different day. All right. I just want to be clear on that distinction. But with this leveling up and where you're going, you cannot 
Yeah, I'm going to stick with those words. You cannot continue to respond to the world in the way that you did before. The emperor wears new clothes, period. So with where we're going now, we can have new responses because we have accepted that no matter how long it takes or even if the journey ends up looking different, we co-sign on what we came here to do. It's not showing off. It's not being better than other people. It's not leaving your family behind. You don't need survivor's guilt, all these other things. You did it. This is what you're here to do. This is the gift that you're here to share, big or small. It, it, there's no comparison. I read that card a few weeks ago when we talked about the um, Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, that each of our paths, what we're here to do, it's not that one is better than the other. Everything that we're here to do is sacred. It is all a divine plan and it's all here for the divine good. Cool? But that self-acceptance, until that's integrated into our nervous system to make us feel safe enough to have a different response, we're still stuck in the water. So as you begin to do this work on your nervous system and you're getting to this place where you're realizing that you are having new responses, guess what? You have new outcomes. When you have new responses, you immediately have new outcomes. That doesn't mean that it's like, oh, everything's perfect and it all works out. But it means that like the outcome for me with the, you know, the phone example was, oh, I don't need to, I got to have an enjoyable day despite a minor inconvenience. Cool. When was the last time I hung out at a mall? Are you kidding me? I was like, dude, what's up 1999? Like, let's fucking do this, you know? And so it was like, cool. All I'm ever trying to do is get a moment to just be able to be by myself and breathe for a second. Great. Get some steps in. Walk around the mall. H&M's got a sale. I'm not usually not a fast fashion girl, but hey, why not? Three items for 35 bucks. I could be talked into it, right? Rather than like making this huge thing. Oh, I'm never going to get into the genius bar. Oh, I should just make a thing. Like I'm making up all these stories of something that didn't exist yet. And so when you have a different response, you get a different outcome. And the more that we have different outcomes, that builds this out, this outward sense of lived experience that you begin to trust and therefore you take higher action, right? Now, some of these things may be happening simultaneously. I want to say that too. Like you may be in the process of, you know, retraining your nervous system, upgrading your nervous system, whatever, making these new acceptance, all these things may flow together. But what I love about them is they do all intertwine. And I think just as far as like, you know, basic teaching, right? Storytell storytelling 101, tell them what you're going to tell them about, tell them about it, tell them what you just told them, right? That's repetition. It's the number one way that we learn. So I don't want you to get stuck on like, oh, well, I'm only on, you know, step B. Like, it's fine. You can still make those, those higher actions. You just may have a little bit more trepidation, right? So you guys know we're opening up the studio. We're in the process to also open a comedy club. I did not know these things were going to be opening up simultaneously, there is a part of me where it's like, oh, well, you know, I could have actually there's not, sorry. I was going to finish that thought. And I was like, no, I actually don't have any trepidation about both things working out together. What I will say though, is I think the part of it that does, that is still the new action, which actually sidebar, that feels cool. A little, that feels good for me um, to be like, no, oh, actually you're totally ready to do both of those at the same time. And you're absolutely capable. Let's fucking go. Um, so I just want to bullshit you where I'm like, wait a minute, actually, that's not, that's not incongruent. Um, but the, the higher thought on that, which is like, you know, you may be like, oh, Rachel, you struggle with like, um, being seen seems that seems not, that feels very hard to believe, but it's true where I think there's in certain spaces, even like, you know, here doing this or like with my communities where it's like, it feels easy but the bigger asks, right? The bigger PR asks, the bigger, like these bigger things, it still does sometimes trigger that old story. Now I don't participate in that old story anymore, but it triggers that response. It, it trigger, or excuse me, not response. I want to be clear because this episode is about responses. It triggers that old story. Almost like if you were doing a search engine into Google and you searched, you know, like shoes or something. There might've been shoes that you bought years ago that you'd be like, oh my God, I would never be caught dead in those. Are you kidding? Um, 
but it would show, oh, at one point you bought these shoes or like, you know, it'll show you that this is something that's available. That's the same thing. When I go to make these bigger asks and step out and be seen more and more and more, then it's going to trigger that of like, oh my God, girl, are you sure? Because like typically everybody else is number one. So maybe everyone's going to make fun of you, um, which is not true, right? And so I share those examples because I know it's the same for you. Whatever that trigger response is, as you begin to make bigger and bigger action, it's okay for that story to show up. You know, I don't know if those, if our old stories ever really go away entirely. Um, maybe they do. I haven't been on this journey long enough to know, but I think for me in this place that I am right now, I feel like they really just serve as a purpose to say, look how far you've come. You have a new story now. Like it's evolution. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that they have to go away entirely. It's the, um, Oh, Jeff, which Jeff? There's so many Jeffs in comedy. Oh, I can't remember. I'll put it in the show notes. But he, um, uh, Jeff Garland, there we go. Thank you. Jeff Garland has this bit that he always says to uh, comedians, uh, just wave to it. Meaning that often when we get anxiety, when we get ready to go on stage and it becomes overwhelming, it's like, can you just wave to it? Just wave to it in the audience. I see you. Thanks so much for being here. Like you don't have to make a meal out of it. It can both exist and you can acknowledge it with ease. So that's what I want you to do when you're making, you're having new responses, which is creating new outcomes and then allowing you that empowerment to have evidence that when you have new responses, you get new outcomes and therefore you are safe to take higher and higher action, right? Which is only going to literally get us to this next place of high living, so to speak, right? So when those old stories come up for you, as you're taking this new action, you don't have to re-engage with it and be like, oh, my old story. Oh, what a thrill. Like it doesn't have to be anything more than like, that's just what our brain does. Like, okay, fine. You know, it's like a system we can't fully override in that way. And it's like, okay, fine. Just be like, oh yeah, that's the way I used to think about myself. Oh, how limiting. How cool now that I'm willing to put myself in this position to, you know, be the principal or to start this new business or ask this person out or set boundaries with my family around the holidays. Like whatever those things are that you're working on for yourself, it's the more that we do these things in action, we get more evidence that we can do it. We get more evidence that those stories that we used to tell ourselves about ourselves, those identities are no longer a fit. They don't work. You literally won't be able to do them. Like I, I just prove that two minutes ago or whatever, when I was going to say something about myself. And then I had this response from my body of like, that's not true. We don't, don't say that. Don't say that to people. That's not true. You don't feel that way. Like I couldn't even get it out of my mouth because I'm like, oh, well, I'm fraud. Don't say that. Right. That's not to say again that it's like, oh, now we've solved everything and you're, you know, cured, you know, but it's simply to say that the more that you do things differently and you do things in your highest, those things just won't even be in alignment anymore. Like even if you tried to like, it's kind of like when you outgrow your style and if you like tried to wear clothes that you used to wear, but you're like, I don't know, I just like feel weird. You know, it's like, I feel like a bear on skates. Like this is just excuse me. It's just not a fit. So we don't need to overcomplicate it. Like, in fact, I feel like this episode, it's like, cool, we did it. Like I'm here for it. Like, I think you guys get it, which is simply of like, this is what we get to look forward to. And what I don't want you to do is question when parts of your life begin to move with more ease because they won't be easy opening up a comedy club and running a studio and running the production side of our business and raising two kids, like everything that I'm balancing that abundance that I'm bringing in that responsibility. It's not easy, but I can move through it with ease. I know what distractions to mute. I know when to turn them on. I know what to say yes to. I'm taking the higher and higher action, right? And that's exactly what you guys are doing in your life right now. You're getting to that place where you're able to see the things that are working and you're creating these new responses. And I just want you to celebrate those. I hope that you have, you know, Maybe you have a huge community of people in your life. If so, call me. I would like to be invited. Um, but maybe you have like one or two friends that are on your level, that are doing this work, that understand, right? Maybe it's a parent or a cousin or whatever, a coworker that you can share these small wins with because they're fucking huge, dude. Like when you are able to respond differently to a trigger than the way you used to respond, that's healing. That's healing. You did it. That's fucking incredible.
Do you know how many people go their entire lives and don't respond differently to anything? In fact, most people, the longer they live responding to things, they just, their responses get shittier and shittier. Not to like totally throw blame on people that, you know, need some help, but I'm just saying where, you know, celebrate those things, celebrate them, please acknowledge them at the very least, because also that celebration and that acknowledgement imprints gives you the evidence that you can do more, that you are capable of more, that there is so much more ahead in this growth journey that you're on than you even know possible right now. And that's so fucking cool. Because I feel like the older we get in life, it feels like all of our firsts are behind us. Because I don't know if it's just because like, you know, we used to marry people at 12 and then everybody, you know, you you're die by the time you're 30 because we didn't have modern medicine. So it's like, we just are all obsessed with firsts, you know? But it's like, by the time you knock those out, society's like, well, have fun in middle age. It's like, no, dude, fuck that. I mean, I know all of you are of all different ages, but it's like, fuck that. You can have firsts as many times as you want. And what a beautiful first to recognize that you are responding to things differently, that you're showing up differently. That's fucking rad. I mean, I think where it's like, especially because those of us that have big visions or big things that you're stepping into, you know, it feels like, oh, well, only when I'm doing this thing, like then it'll be, it's like, stop, stop with that. Stop with that future trip and bullshit. Like, what are the things that are happening now? Because when you don't acknowledge them, it's again, it's not integrating that into your nervous system. So really taking that time and acknowledging that work is, is paramount. And then that leads to being able to take higher and higher action. And it's, you know, people are lying if they say, cause you can take higher action, but if it's not embodied, then you'll fumble it to be perfectly honest with you. And so that's why, you know, sometimes you'll see people in your circles or maybe somebody's throwing their hat in the ring for a job and you're like, you're so many, I mean, maybe this is a judgment call, but let's look at it from like a higher lens, right? It's like, yeah, you see somebody who's trying to go after a job where it's like, they're not ready for that job yet. I mean, kudos for them for like, you know, being a little Delulu to like try to go after it. But it's like, that's the difference of like, just because you can take the action doesn't mean that you're ready for it. And I feel like we do know when we're ready to take those higher actions because typically you say yes to wanting to do them, but there's still a little bit of that like, ooh, and that's exciting. That's so great. That means that like you're doing it and you're taking the action. So I'm so amped for you. If you felt really connected to this series, please let me know. Uh, rachel.laforce at gmail.com, rachel at rachellaforce.com. You can DM me on social. Uh, please let me know. Connect with me over on Substack. We've got bonus material every single week. We have live Q and A's. I have 50% off coupons for, uh, any of my readings. Yeah. 50% off five zero. I know as I'm, if I'm anything but selfish, you know what I mean? Um, I'm kidding. And, uh, yeah, I, I just would love to have you guys there. I mean, the community right now, we're small, we're growing. But I'm so excited because I want to be able to do like uh, community meet and greets, you know, like actually live and in person. We're going to be doing a ton of uh, live events in Atlanta. So especially if you're in Atlanta, jump on that. We're going to be doing virtual live events where I want us to come together. Like, how are we working through these things? Like, let's actually break down, you know, some of the brass tacks and tools of these things. Um, I I'm just, you know, I'm, I want to learn from you all as well. So go over to Substack, check that out. I've got a two card read that um, gives us a little bit more insight from uh, our guides around this idea of action. So I'm pulling, I pulled one card from my chakra deck and one from my archetype deck tier two. So um, it's only $10.99 a month. Check that out. I would be um, so grateful for your support. So please, uh, please support me. Um, I would really be grateful, but I love you so much. And I'm so freaking stoked, dude, for all of the work to come uh, ahead. We've got some big stuff we already read into the July energy this month and August. I mean, the next few months are really, are really kind of golden. They're nice. I mean, there, there's some, you know, turbulence as anything, but it's like, you know, the last year was really tough. The first part of this year was really tough. And we've kind of had this really like, woo, like we're kind of going on a ride. So, um, some really beautiful stuff coming up. All right. As always, whew, tune out, tune in, love you, mean it. Time, weather, and...